not necessarily, and this doesn't just go for migration, but I think it's true generally in public policy, but, and is where kind of the political system is held hostage, and public policy is held hostage to the interest of self, of, of short-term gain. Um, so that a politician running for office needs a record to point to. I brought in so many jobs, for example, and I was running on that just recently, even if it means moving, as Ron explained to me, a certain number of jobs from one area in Rochester to another. Um, you can say, I did that. Not my last jobs, but I got jobs, and I'm great. So you want to have, you want to have a platform of a, a record that you can point to. You're not someone, if you're running for office, you don't want to point to a program that's going to take eight, ten more years to implement. Yes? Um, when, I mean, historically, the government in the US certainly sort of waited for unions to organize to correct some of the issues. I mean, that's correct. Kind of traditional rule. But how, with globalization, Why hasn't labor organizing crossed borders? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, there are good and stark reasons for that. Uh, the AFL-CIO has been real slow in acknowledging a number of things. Um, it was uh, only in, uh, in, in, in 2000, 11 years ago, when they started recognizing the need to admit and to have people here illegally in, in unions. Up until 2000, they hadn't acknowledged that. But as the demographics changed, and they realized that people here illegally were a potent political force, they changed their policy. Uh, but it, it took them many years, uh, and were brought into doing that, kicking and screaming. Um, as for the reason that global organizing hasn't taken place, uh, you really go back trace that back to 